Today, we're going to cover another critical component of any type of RAG system, and this is going to be vector embeddings. Now, what necessarily are vector embeddings? Well, these are going to be the representation of particular data as numbers. Now you can think of like the RAG pipeline, right? Let's take an example where you have a large document, right? And then we go through the chunking process. I covered that in our text splitters video. Uh, so now you have small chunks in within this document. Next thing you want to do is you want to upload these chunks into your vector database. Well, in the name, it says vector database. So what we need to do is turn these chunks into vectors and you choose that through an embedding model. Now, this video is in particular is going to focus on the open AI embedding models, the both small and large. We'll talk about different things like dimensions and how to get this working within a pinecone vector database and a little bit more along the way. Real quick though, guys, before we jump into this tutorial, if you guys need any help, with any any end workflows or any data or automation needs. I am taking on customers. You can find my contact information down below in the description. So with this out of the way, let's learn a little bit more about vector embeddings. All right, let's jump right into it. So we're gonna go through two examples, right? So we're gonna go over the large embeddings and small embeddings here. I'm not gonna cover ADA2. I wouldn't recommend using that. And yeah, so first, like what are embeddings? So Use embedding models when you want to change data into vectors. So essentially you chunk the document, right? With text splitters covered that, and then we embed each of these chunks. So just to give you guys some examples, what we have over here is two different artists, Billy Strings and Eddie Vedder. And you can see that their embeddings are actually quite close together. You can see this one example over here, 1888 old judge cards, 1889 and 43 Allen and Ginter cards, right? These are both cards. They have very similar embeddings. And then you have 100K Ultra uh, for running, and this is just nowhere. What happens when you embed data is things that are closely related, they're gonna have very close numerical representations. For example, the two artists, Billy Strings and Eddie Vedder, the two cards, Old Judge and 43, and then the running 100K Ultra, it's just out of nowhere, right? Um, because there's nothing similar to it on the side of things. And you can see also like the two artists, different embeddings than the cards as well, because these are not similar to these over here. So that's like very simplistic way of just showing how embeddings look like. You'll see this over here as we run some data. Another thing to mention is when you query as well as you embed, you need to use the same exact model. So just to show you this over here, right? Uh, when we load up data into our vector store over here, which we'll do through a form submission, stuff like that, we have our embeddings model over here. And by default right now, I have this as text embedding three large. Then we go over here to this AI agent, right? And we're gonna query this AI agent. Again, this is super simplistic rack, right? We're gonna build out way more complicated systems here in this playlist and videos on the channel, but we gotta start basic first. You go over here to this pinecone vector store and uh, you wanna make sure these are the same. So you can see text embedding three large. We go over here, text embedding three large. So make sure if you're using the same vector store, right? Same exact model across the board for those embeddings, right? Because we're gonna embed our specific query into this AI agent, and we're, query, we're embedding our data that we're gonna store in this vector store. So these have to be the same. Sometimes you'll see like some templates here in any end that people do like this. Like, let me just show you this for a second. Like you'll sometimes see people that go like this and just use the same exact bedding across the board, right? So like this embedding is shared between both of these. Like, I don't mind that, but I just, I find it cleaner. Like you just separate it and have it like this my own personal preference, of course, but um, that's the approach that I would like to use. Just make sure that these are gonna be exactly the same or you're gonna have issues. Okay, so next thing to mention is gonna be dimensions, right? And this refers to the number of numerical values in the vector representation of an item. And you'll see this within our vector database uh, when we go into Pinecone, you have different options on there. So typically you wanna use higher dimensions if you want more accuracy, right? And you want to go and get more complex relationships or nuances. So that is why like large embeddings are going to cost more than your small embeddings. You're just going to get more numbers associated um, with the data that you're specifically embedding. And typically like in these videos, I'll probably just use large embeddings. Again, it's more expensive and um, you'll see the dimensions are higher, right? 3072 on the side of things in comparison to 1536 across the board. So a little bit of context on that side of things um, before we jump into it. Remember, like why why we're using vector embeddings? We're converting our data into numbers. 
If data is similar, we're going to have similar embeddings, as I showed you over here. We look at different types of dimensions, larger dimensions, right? More complex relationships, uh, typically better results. So use a larger embedding model if you prefer accuracy. If it doesn't matter as much, use a smaller embedding model on that side of things with smaller amount of dimensions. OpenAI has two that you typically will use, large embeddings and small embeddings. There's tons more out there for embedding models. I probably will cover this in other videos in that side of things, but uh, you know, typically when you see like some RAG systems that are built, people use a small or large. Um, most likely they're gonna use a large though if they prefer accuracy, which you would wanna use, right? Like why are you gonna build out a vector? Um, why are you gonna build a, a RAG system if you don't wanna have it to be accurate? Anyways, um, let's kind of walk through this. So first thing what I'm doing is I'm gonna do a form submission on this video. So we're just gonna upload in a document over here. So just look for the on form trigger. So just like form like this, any end form and just go for on new any end form event. So what we're gonna do is just drag in a document. So I just called it file uploader. Uh, element type is a file. You know, I'm just gonna accept one file at a time. I think it's best if I have file types. I think I'm just gonna upload in a PDF and then we're gonna put this into our pinecone vector source. So uh, let me show you how you can set this up first. The first thing you wanna do is get an API key on pinecone. So let me just log in and I'll show you where all this is at. And if you've already watched some of my other rag videos on this channel, I feel free to skip through it. I'm just showing this for people who may be here for the first time. Um, but you can see, you can create an API key over here. Just copy that value in over here for Pinecone. Again, there's other vector databases out there. I just use Pinecone for ease of use, um, but we'll be exploring some of the other ones as well. Uh, next side of it, like we wanna get our data loaded in over here. So I just chose this data loader over here. We're adding in binary over here. We can load in specific data. What I'm gonna do is load in a PDF. It's gonna have the data name over it and text splitting, we're gonna choose um, custom and I'm just gonna use a recursive text splitter. Uh, we'll do a 400 chunk size and we'll just do like a chunk overlap of 100. It doesn't really matter too much. This video isn't focused about um, splitting up our data. Or it's more focused on, you know, how are we gonna specifically embed our data into vectors, okay? So we have that over here. Um, again, just to show you where all this stuff is, right? If you look for pinecone, so pinecone like this, you'll see pinecone vector store, and then we're just gonna add a document to our vector store. So we have that there, then go over here for embeddings. So just click this. You'll see we have a lot of different embeddings over here, Cohere, Bedrock, Azure, Gemini, Vertex, Hugging Face, Mistral, OpenAI, Olama. I'm just gonna use OpenAI for this video. So just click over here. Right, set up your API credentials for OpenAI. Uh, hopefully you all have that ready to go. And if not, I have a video on it, but like super easy, just add an API key on that side of things. And then you'll see large or small. Like these are the two most popular ones that I see across builds. Um, we're gonna start with large. I'll show you how to set up small as well. So there's that, right? And uh, go over here, default data loader. And to get this to be an oval, all you gotta do is click this and then choose custom. And then go over here and choose your recursive. Again, I have a full video on text splitters, so that's not the goal of this video, right? The goal is to show you the embedding, but uh, you have to at least build out this process. And that's why like when I was building out the video, I'm like, what should I cover first? Uh, embeddings or should I cover the text splitter? Because they kind of go hand in hand, but I think this video is better off to be number two. In there okay so we have that the second side of it is we're going to ask our question on this um so we have a chat message received right this is our trigger to start this workflow so just search for chat trigger then we have our ai agent so just search for ai agent so you'll see our ai agent like over here uh we have our chat model now this chat model doesn't necessarily have to be an open ai chat model you can use whatever you want uh, i'm just going to use gpt5 mini on this side of it, right? And typically, like if you want higher accuracy, use a more expensive model on that side of things. There's a lot of tips and tricks we'll be going over in the series, but uh, I'd recommend that. Um, probably wouldn't use GPT-5 mini and my full rag build, but you know, we'll see. Uh, next, what we have is our vector store again. So this time we actually add that as a tool to our AI agent. So just go over to tool, search for pinecone, right? And you can see it says pinecone vector store. So we have this over here as a tool, all right? You can just 
put whatever you want over here. Um, work with this for rag data. Obviously, this is the best approach um, on that side of things for the description, right? And you can see, explain to LM what this tool does. A good specific description allows LM to produce results more often. So like, I would not put this into production on that side of it, but we're just, again, focusing more on the embedding side of it. And this shows you like how many chunks we're gonna bring back, right? So uh, I just kept this as four over here. We can include our metadata or not, which metadata is probably gonna be the next video in this playlist. And then you choose your pinecone index, which I'll be showing you how to set this up shortly. All right, so what we're gonna do is for our first example, and by the way, again, embedding model, we're gonna go over here and uh, we're gonna use large for our first example. So let me just go over here and create this with you guys. What we're gonna do is go over here to database and we're gonna create an index. So what I'm gonna call this over here is rush large. So um, what we're gonna do, and this is just based off the band, they just announced their reunion. So I felt like theming the video off of that. Uh, what you're gonna do is next look for this configuration. So here's some of them that are built in, right? So you can see llama text embed v2, multilingual E5 large, a pinecone sparse English V0. And, and then you have the two open AI models that I talked about, right? Large and small. Now I would recommend you start with large over here. Okay. And then you have all these different settings over here, right? And what we want to do is on these dimensions for open AI large, we need to set this over here to 3072. So make sure you set this up over here. Also, it talks about other things with managing your embeddings. Again, we'll cover more advanced embeddings in another video. This is just to get you off the ground going. Um, we're gonna choose AWS business default, Virginia default, because I'm using a free account over here. And then we're gonna create this index. Again, super important that we chose large, right? Super important we got these dimensions as 3072. Because if we don't have these correct, we're gonna have issues. So now what we can do is go over here, go to the Pinecone Vector Store, and what we're gonna do is choose Rush. So uh, Rush Large over here on that side of it. And let's go through the process of just uploading this document. All right, so what we're gonna do is execute this workflow now. I'm gonna choose our file. So Rush Permanent Waves and uh, form has been submitted. So click out of that. And it's going over here, go to our Pinecone Vector Store. Uh, one other thing to mention, I did rename this. So I just called this field name data, just so this binary file is called data. Um, so that way we have this over here. So that way you guys don't have an error, right? So again, we're looking PDF, we're looking for data on there. And uh, yeah, it brought in 10 specific items over here, uh, just based off of our text splitter, which was a 400 chunk size. So you can see each of these over here. Right, we, we're gonna get some chunk overlap across the board, um, but these are our chunks that are split apart. So we have uh, 10 of these in total. And uh, you know, let's see what goes on on this other side. So what we have over here are these responses, right? So let me close these out for you guys. And you can see response zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And you know, we have the values associated with them. like. Look at all these values across the board, right? Again, there's other ways we can take a look at this data. This actually might crash because there's so much in that table. Let's see on the JSON side. So you can see the response and we have all of these numerical representations over there. And we go in our Pinecone vector store, right? It's just gonna give us the chunks on that side of things, a little bit more information across the board. So really you gotta jump into this embeddings to see these numbers if you really care about those. Um, but that's that over there. And just to show you also that this is getting populated over here in Pinecone. If I re-rush, rerun this, I almost said re-rush this, right? Uh, you can see we're getting our information over here and uh, we have our text going across the board over here, the PDF title, right? Which is Rush Permanent Waves and a little bit more information over there. Right, so all this data is being stored now in our vector database, which is really awesome. So that is essentially large. What I wanna just show you really quick is how you could set up small as well. Um, so small embeddings, again, it's gonna be lower cost. You're gonna use 1536 dimensions. So let's jump through that really fast. So now what we should do is create our index for rush small. So I'm just gonna go over create index. We're gonna just say rush small like this. 
Uh, what I'm gonna do is just go over here and choose the small model. And again, make sure your dimensions are gonna be 1536 on that side of things. We're gonna keep AWS, we're gonna keep Virginia. All this is gonna be default. And I'm gonna click over here and say create index. And now we have rush small over here. And again, if we wanna re just repurpose this for small, all we're gonna do is change our embedding model over here. So instead of large, we're just gonna go over here into small, right? And uh, default loader, we're good. We don't have to change anything else over here. Recursive, we're good as well. And then over here, right? Just make sure you choose rush small like that. And then let's just run this again. So I'm gonna click execute step, choose file, permanent waves, click submit. And it's gonna go over here, it's gonna embed and it's gonna go over recursive text splitter. We're gonna have our 10 items again. And then you have all the responses over here across the board, right? And you'll see, we go all the way down over here. Oops, let's see where we're at. Let's go to response zero. So this should go to 1536. You can see, uh, sorry, it should go to 1535. And you can see that right over here, 1535 across the board. So, and that's the first part of it. And the second part of it is, you know, our embeddings over here, if we ask a question. So I'm just gonna keep this initially for large because we'll just look at this over here. And uh, yeah, so what we have is our chat trigger. We have this mini. And then we have our embeddings, right, large. And again, just make sure we're looking at large. So this large over there. And uh, let's actually ask a question based around the document. All right, so I put over here in spirit of the radio, how should you begin the day? Give a two word answer and then gives me a friendly voice, which is correct, right? If you think of the lyrics, begin the day with a friendly voice. Again, super, super basic example. And all I did over here as well on this AI agent Again, I wouldn't do this for production, but just for this video, your helpful assistant that uses the Pinecone tool to answer all questions, do not use anything else, right? I'd probably write that system message a little bit better. And then also just show you to these embeddings, right? These are large, so we're gonna have quite a bit of uh, numbers over here. And you can see we're way past that 1535, right? You can see all the way over here, we have 3071. Again, we start at zero on that side of things, right? And this is a very, very short message that I'm getting sent over here uh, to search. And then you can see it goes to the Pinecone Vector Store. We put a limit of four. So you see we get four responses, zero, one, two, three. Begin with the friendly voice over here on that side of things. And it went to our chat model twice over there. So guys, that is essentially it for embeddings. Again, just broad overview. Embeddings change your data into vectors, right? When you use an embedding model. So you can see for this example, we had Billy Strings and we have these numbers associated with it. You need to use the same exact model for embedding and querying. So if I change this up and use the small embedding model or a small vector store, I need to make sure I use small over here. If I use large, I use large, right? So make sure these are one-to-one, -one, otherwise you're gonna have errors. Make sure your dimensions line up if you're using OpenAI large embeddings, use 3072 dimensions. If you're using small embeddings, use 1536, right? I wouldn't recommend using ADA02. And uh, remember, higher is gonna be uh, more complicated relationships. You'll tend to get better results across the board, but it is a little bit more expensive. And that is it across the board. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this video, another RAG video as well. And there's probably going to be well over like five to 10 videos just talking about RAG, if not more. So hope you guys have enjoyed this. If you learned something new, make sure to subscribe to the channel. Let me know if you want me to cover anything else and I will catch you guys in another video.